Join me now for this edition of the Knicks Film School pregame show that also is going to work as a crossover here on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. When he is not wearing a Yankee hat and staring right at me, forcing me <laughs> to combat it, which actually works because when he's also not arguing with Knicks fans on Twitter and talking about big market bias, uh, he is covering the New Orleans Pelicans for uh, – uh, oh, what's the name of the blog again? I'm blanking on it. What's uh, it called? So, Boot Crew Media is our is our network. So That's we right. were Blue Wire. Shouldn't that were Blue Wire up until about a a, a year ago or oh. one season? Oh, yeah. well, also the In the Know podcast uh, and the and, and oh, New Orleans. Uh, he is Mason Ginsburg. Mason, it's always great to see you, man. Even with the Yankee hat on. I thought it would be uh, endearing to a degree for uh, doing the uh, the Knicks crossover. Uh, I forgot that you're a Mets guy, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, the backstory is my dad's my dad grew up in New York. He was uh spent the first 10, 13 years of his life there. So he I was raised on Yankees baseball, a little bit of Rangers hockey, Knicks basketball actually before the Pelicans came to New Orleans, the Hornets. So um, I'm I'm definitely a, a a a New York guy from my childhood. Uh, because you know, I mean the Saints obviously, but that's all we had when I was a kid was the Saints that you know the uh, Hornets didn't show up till I was 14. So or yeah, something like that. Well, what I will say is you're not the first person that I met uh, that I've met in my life that was raised a Yankee fan. And then somehow, (laughs) regardless of where you were in the country, uh, and then now it's stuck with you. So um, I will tolerate it for this episode, especially since we're not going to talk about baseball. On yeah, this show. I, I like to give the, the I, I've probably met a lot of people who are just Yankees fans. So the same reason people are Lakers fans and Cowboys fans. Like, I, I actually got family reasons for it. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. The Knicks, <laughs> it's weird. The Knicks actually do fall somewhat under that category, except the front runner aspect. Just the, the fact that there are millions of Knicks fans everywhere for no reason, you know? Like, well, Cowboys they're, they're, are the same way. Cowboys have been trash for like the last two decades. So. At this point, I mean, you're I, right. <laughs> yes. Yes. But again, we will keep this. We will keep football out. We will keep baseball out. Let's talk about our basketball teams. Um, Let's do it. I'm sure that there will be a Zion Williamson conversation that you're so excited to have with the New Yorker. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. who, uh, listen, I have not put him in any trade scenarios, I have not put him in any fake trades on Trade Machine. I will just say that. Um, before we get into all of that, I'm sure what a lot of people are going to want to hear and talk about, uh, hear us talk about, I should say, um, 30 and 30. And this is after a, a start to the season that really looked promising, that looked like a, a chance of potentially even some title contention. Um, mm-hmm. I was was super impressed. We actually have a running bit here at Knicks Film School where they're, they're my Pelicans. I keep talking about last season's playoff run and how that's the example of the play-in working, where you get in, you win a couple games, you have an impressive first round matchup in a losing effort, and then you go into the off season with that kind of momentum where it's not the worst thing to be in the middle, especially when you're a young team looking to take a leap. And I thought that that's what the Pelicans were doing. How do you feel with what's happened? Obviously the Zion injury had a lot to do with the, the downturn and the fact that they're 30 and 30, but is there still the version of that team that you see that can be a contender in the West? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I think folks do I, I I do I think that ship has sailed for this season. <sighs> Look, the Kevin Durant tree doesn't help matters, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a new contender in the in the West, and I you know, um, but um, but yeah, it's it's I mean, they, they were trending that way. People were talking about this team back in December as, as a team, you know, based on all the data, all the data points you saw about you know how they've been performing uh, against. They, they took care of business against bad teams. They held their own against good teams. They were. Uh, <laughs> I joked when my uh, when my seven week old daughter was born, the Pelicans were number one seed in the West. They were tied for, mm. for first. <laughs> Things have gone downhill from there, but uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, the Zion injury obviously hurt. There was a period they were without Bi and Zion, and they lost. They had a huge losing streak, and so um, it's it's every year with this team that the injuries seem to be what derails them. And so um, I think the, the the maddening part we can get into this is really how different, at least recently. The results have been from the second half of last season to, um, you know, to the, the game Zion's been out. And so because like the team is one of the things that, that the Pelicans were excited about was the continuity of the team from last season. Mm. The only guy they, they lost Tony Snell. They added Dyson Daniels in the draft. Um, that was it. That was the change. And so, um, you know, you, you would hope that even without Zion, you continue that momentum. And he was playing for a lot of the year. But now that they don't have him. The team has not been the same. I mean, the, t- the players on the floor have been the same, but the team has not been. Um, and so that's been the frustrating part, at least lately. 
so I guess we just have the Zion conversation now because that's sure. Uh, well, I'm sure you're excited, so excited again to that's probably the number one thing that's being talked about in in New Orleans right now, as far as like what is he and and how concerned are you? And I I mean I'll just flatly ask like how concerned are you that um, a that he'll get back on the floor this season, b that this will not be a continuous issue for the remainder of his career, and I guess see like if this is if the, and not that there's buyer's remorse to the extension because it was a no-brainer extension to, to give to him, but like how are the vibes right now around the, the Pelicans being built around this player? Yeah, no, no regrets in the extension at all or anything. Like the the, the team was like he's a transformational talent. And mm-hmm. I think I think that ch- the challenge really stems from having your best two players who are missing a lot of games. And like and and not I'm not not to blame Ingram for Zion's injuries, but like having two guys like that who you know Ingram missed a ton of time with his toe injury. Um, and, and so, you know, Zion, I think the one thing I will say is that this isn't like a chronic knee or foot injury, like, like you, you know, it's a hamstring injury and these happen to everyone. Um, and setback, and he did have a setback a couple of weeks ago and it's, it, you know, reading up on it, having, listening to, to ex, medical experts, the a hamstring injury is one of the most common ones you can re-aggravate and, 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 mm. uh, have setback on. And so, you know, it, it is a concern year in year out with Zion. It's going to be just with the body type he has. Um, I, I'm not worried about this being a chronic issue um, once it gets right. I think everyone expects him to be back um, as you know for the playoffs, ideally before. Um, I think what our hope is, and you know internally, and you know not not sure what the team really expects, but if they can get like two weeks before the end of the season where they get get him back and in, in, involved um before the playoffs and um you know the, the play in honestly at this point with new uh, the way that they're, they're tracking you know we're that, that that's what you can hope for but uh, you know it, it is to given the where this team the, the season started the first you know two two and a half months of the year where the team was mostly healthy even with without ingram with zion in the lineup they were they were mashing people and so um it, it is tough um because like you know what this team can be um but you haven't really seen it consistently on the floor, which <laughs> predates Zion, honestly. Like that's what happened back with the, you know, the last iteration of the Pelicans with Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis. I mean, you just never saw that you know, full team together for long stretches. You said something before that everyone expects. Is that the fan base or is that the the team, like the front office? That like is is the fan base like does that do they share that sentiment that he's gonna come back? And I guess as a result. Have there been any whispers from what you've heard or I guess around the team and some of the reporting that there is some like doubt in his ability to stay healthy? No, no. I, I mean, like this is a whether I, I think that the expectation here is that he's going to be back uh, for, you know, for the playoffs and even before that. Um, you never know. Obviously, there can be another there could be another setback. But again, this is not like a. You know, this isn't a, a, a ligament in his knee or mm-hmm. or a foot injury for a guy who's who carries a lot of weight. Um, it's you know, it's a hamstring, and you just got to be careful. You got to be delicate with it. But there's no, I don't, I don't hear any long term concerns at all about about where Zion's at with this. So I I wanted to fully stress the the fact that it's solely the injury that I have when it comes to doubts with him because mm-hmm. like you just look at the, di- the the lineup data and where he was when he got hurt and like I'm staring at it right now. The guy is plus 24 in his minutes this year, which is the 93rd percentile. Um, yeah. That's, that's like, it's not Jokic numbers, but it's like Jokic for a month numbers, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, there was first or second team all NBA trajectory for him. It's why, like I understood when he was voted in as the starter for the all-star game, even if it was like knowing he wasn't going to play. Um, and I'll, <laughs> I, I got I to gotta laugh for you. I'm, I'm going to give you the opportunity to, to get a good chuckle in. So there's a debate, not a, a debate amongst Knicks fans, but in a group chat that I'm in, um, would the Knicks trade Randall for Zion straight up because of his injury? See, there you go. Gave the laugh. Now, I will say, I do have a ton of concerns about the injuries, and it's why I wanted to talk to you, because while it is just a hamstring and like that is an injury that has setback, this is another lower body injury. Mm-hmm. But that's like if if we're just like turning injuries off in 2K, I have no doubt that this guy as a player, like the talent is top five, top 10 in the league. And so I can understand like it's it's not the same thing with what the Knicks went through with Porzingis, where they 
didn't have the trust that he would stay healthy. And they were kind of proven right in that sense when they traded him in 2019 before the extension kicked in. Um, but I can understand if, I guess if there was a frustration amongst the fan base, which it sounds like there isn't, um, as far as the Western conference is concerned though, Mason, like we, we talk about how far they've fallen and after the losing streak and they're 30 and 30 and eighth in the, in the West, there are two games in the lost column behind the four seed. How has it been just, we have something different over in the East, but in the West where like a three game winning streak, you're back in, in fourth and three game losing streak, you're in 13th. How has that been this season? I mean, look, here's the thing. It, it's, it's cool to, to look at and say, oh, you're so close. But at the same time, the, 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 the stuff that happened at the trade deadline, you know, the, the, you, so you've got Memphis and, and uh, Denver reasonably far ahead of the pack. Memphis has kind of fallen off a little bit, but it feels like they're going to, you know, they're not going to fall out of the top four. So maybe maybe you know, Denver, I think, may carry us through as a one seed. But Memphis, maybe they fall a little bit. But I don't think they're falling out of a home first-round playoff series. Then you've got Phoenix, who's going to get Kevin Durant back. Um, I don't think there's anyone that's disillusioned enough to think that they're going to outpace the the Suns with, with KD, as long as they get him back pretty soon. It sounds like they're going to. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have the Clippers, who have been playing like a really good like a really good team, with shocking, with their stars healthy. Um, and then you've also got this wild card of Dallas. What, who know, Who the hell knows what's going to happen with, with – um, with with Luca and Kyrie, I think that defense is could be one of the worst defenses we've ever seen. But they're yeah. also going to be able to score on anybody, and so that's a total wild card to me. But like, that's the thing is, yeah, they're close to the three or four seed. But I don't. There's so many teams they'd have to jump to get there. I don't even view there's a realistic possibility without Zion. With Zion healthy, sure, I think it could happen. But I'm, I'm just not there. And then and so, yeah, it's just the question is, can you avoid the play in? And I don't. I don't know. Like, I don't see it. Like, I, I think, I, I just think that again, there are too many teams that, and based on the way they've been playing basketball recently without Zion, I think that's kind of the important thing that underscores everything here is they can't score. They, they have a bunch of good offensive players, even without Zion and they can't score the damn ball. So there's just, a, there's so much negative, you know, energy working against them right now that, you know, I think they should get into the play in. Um, but whether or not they can do anything beyond that, it really just depends on when you can get your best player back. Is that the goal in your minds? Or at least what you personally need to see is, is get out of the play in like not, I'm not saying like advanced out of the play. And I'm saying like, is there a seed in mind that you feel they need to get to, to make this playoff run have a chance to be somewhat successful? Um, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, I don't, I don't see any, like of, of those teams that could be the top four seeds. Like I guess with a fully healthy team, the, you can make an argument the Pelicans can play with anyone, but because that they did play with anyone before before Zion went down, but but also like they're not going to beat the. I don't see them beating the Suns in a playoff series. Denver, you may like with again with everyone healthy, maybe you could make the argument. Memphis, if you get Jaron Jackson to foul trouble, which which is you know maybe that's a that's a uh, argument you can make, but again like even if you get out of the whether or not you get out of the play in like you're, the top four seeds in the West. It, it, assuming they are Denver, Memphis, um, the the Suns and the Clippers, there's no there's no easy outs there. And so I don't know. Like it would be great to be out of the play in, but you're still in a tough spot in the five or six seed. I mean, it's it's no, there's no yeah. I mean, it's similar to the Eastern Conference, like top four seeds are, are pretty damn good teams. Yes, that's the the Knicks have a. I'll say there there are Knicks fans. I may be one of them at times, depending on how the most recent game has just went. Um, where I think we can match up well against anybody and um like they have a recent win against the celtics they have a recent win against the sixers they have a recent win against the Cavs, and the recent win yeah. against the heat um so it's like one of the, these things where especially the after the josh hart trade a player you are familiar with after his time sure. in new orleans yeah. um he's just like lit a fire under uh, the second unit and and what things could be um so I, I, there's like fifth seed aspirations with with the knicks right now while recognizing there potentially could be a drop off after the top four um, with the nets, no longer part of that, that cluster at the mm-hmm. top of the, the East, I guess if I were to ask you, like, can we just do the exercise of going one through however many until we get to where you see a healthy Pelicans lining up. So you'd go Denver one. Yeah. Um, as far as 
So are we doing like standings or like actually how good the teams are? Yeah, because... like teams you would put ahead of, of of the Pelicans if you're just going by health wise. Like basically I'm trying to what I'm trying to figure out is in your head, who are the teams you're most afraid of come playoff time? That like I know you said you like the other teams would probably be favored in said matchup, but are coming from a delusional Knicks fan that like would have like certain rankings of like, oh, I'm afraid of them, not as much as I'm afraid of them, or as not as much if as I'm afraid of them. So if you went Denver one, how far down before you get to, you know what, then, then you got the Pelicans. The yeah. Pelicans so, team. yeah. So D- Denver, I've got over the Pelicans, the, the Suns. Um, see, I'm not even sure full, like on neutral site, seven game series, fully healthy Grizzlies versus Pelicans. I'm not sure I even take Memphis. I mean, I, I think there mm. was, they were, they were playing, I think they were really close um, up until the injury uh, for Zion. But um, I mean, Memphis has been able to stay healthier. Um, so it, you know, it, if, if we're turning that off, then I, I, I think there's an argument. I think the other two teams that would really make me nervous are the Clippers and the Warriors. Um, so I mean, the, the Warriors have the same problem as the Pelicans; they can't stay healthy. But, um, but really, it's De- it's Denver, it's Phoenix, it's the Clippers, it's the Warriors, and then I've, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm probably taking the Pelicans at full strength over every single other team uh, in that in the equation. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean that's it's totally even with the Clippers. I mean they they're just chronically unhealthy too. So um, it's a you know pie in the sky type thing. But but yeah, I mean I mean the, the Pelicans were you know they were playing with the best of them before uh, the the wheels fall off the bus with with the Zion injury. I have a take to unleash on you. I don't okay. think I don't think this is the Warriors year. I've been off the bus. <laughs> on them i think that we forget two years ago they didn't even make the play-in and the year before they won like 15 games in a pandemic shortened season yes last year they won the title and i understand what that top five lineup looks like especially when staff is healthy i just at a certain point you are what you are and while i recognize that like the the lineup data with staff is great they also were 20 and 18 with staff so it's not like they were like world beaters and I just, unless there's the, I'd like to see the winning streak or the thing that gets them over 500 consistently. And it just, yeah. it hasn't happened yet. You know, I'm with you. Yeah. I've got like, so like, there's almost like there's Denver, there's Denver, there's Phoenix. And then there's the Clippers. I think they're the, the they're the top three. And mm-hmm. then there's Memphis, Golden State, New Orleans. I have in that second tier again, I guess as fully healthy. Um, so Sorry, Dallas. Like, I just don't. I think your defense is too shitty. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of with you on Dallas. There's going to be a lot of like first to one thirty in in their schedule. You know. Now, I will yeah. say they have the easiest schedule remaining. So I don't know. I, and look, I this I don't want to turn this into that conversation. But there is an on. Will they be on the court? Question for one of their best players that. I just I, I lived through it in New York where it was like, oh, he's playing today. Oh, no, he's not playing today. It's a road. It's a home game, you know, or <laughs> or yeah, like, oh, yeah. Amazon released a movie. Like, I just <laughs> I don't know whether or not you can count on him to play the rest of the season. Now, I, I do think my guess is he's motivated to get a max and he will yeah. prove a point and play. I just I, there is a will that like, similar not to the same reasoning of if they're on the court with the Pelicans, uh, mm-hmm. with the Mavericks. but. I, I don't I cannot guarantee that they will have their full roster available for the most important games of the season in Dallas. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how your your playoff race is different from the Knicks specifically. Um, yeah. As far as the, yeah. the Pelicans season has gone outside of Zion, um, I I love this kid Alvarado. Um, I do think like some Knicks fans that haven't watched a lot of the Pelicans are going to be interested to see how he looks because he had that big game or that really good game at New York last year. And then the only other times I feel like Knicks fans that don't watch the Pelican saw him was with that sneak play where he like hides in, in the, on the bench and then comes and steals the ball. Tell, tell Knicks some of the like, rising star rising stars. Games, yeah. At least. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. If they watch the rising stars, yeah, fair, saw the fair. ratings. <laughs> um, shout out Quentin Grimes for the rising stars game, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah. So, Tell tell Knicks fans a little bit about this young player who I'm sure Pelicans fans are excited about. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about uh, Josh Hart a similar way, and I, I, I I'm I'm fully with you. I, we love we love Josh Hart in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, we make that trade for CZ every every t- every time just because of the credibility it gives the, the organization and, and that kind of the theoretical ability to withstand some injuries to the best players. That's kind of what CJ gives you. 
Um, but Josh was awesome. I mean, like he's instant energy, he's instant rebounding uh, support, which was it's a, something the Pelicans are struggling at this year. But for Jose, I mean, that's that's it. Like he get he comes on the court, and you know he's going to be like in, up in your face and and you know doing whatever he can to make to make make winning plays. So um, you know the Pelicans sometimes can go spurts without a true point guard. Like mm. you know CJ and Bi are good creators. Um, they're not true ones and they don't i'm not saying the pelicans especially with zion healthy need that i don't really think they do but jose does give them that that that, that guy who can kind of run the offense and i, I you know I, ha, I like his change of pace style on offense so he's not the fastest guy but he can he's cracking get get you know get around you it is it's like chris paul in a way he's nowhere near the shooter mm-hmm. chris paul is um you know that's i think the, yes i can shoot he can but he's not <laughs> he's not he's not gonna you know consistently burn you from deep but um, I think that's about, that's really where he, you know, he's been the guy that's maybe most pleasantly surprised me. I was on podcasts last off season, wondering whether or not he was just kind of a flash in the pan, a gimmick kind of player. And was he going to be able to sustain that success? And he has, um, the shootings tailed off a little bit recently. Um, but overall he's been a, you know, he's been a, a guy who makes winning plays and he's a great second unit point guard for this team. Um, you know, now that they've traded Devonte Graham, I think it helps his viability because you're not stuck playing two undersized guards together as much. So he and CJ are kind of the small guys, but, and you don't have to, you don't really see those guys playing much together. And now if Jose is your one smaller guard with other players that are bigger, you, you, you can, you can do more. Um, And so it's been, it's been fun to watch him play. I got to correct myself, by the way, I said earlier that Zion was plus 24 for the season. That's the expected wins stat, which by the way, is still nuts. Um, But he's plus nine, but basically plus 10, 9.9 for the season right below him. Jose Alvarado in almost 1300 minutes is plus 5.9 uh, uh, this season on the, on the court. Um, yeah. I, the Knicks have a couple of players like that with Emmanuel quickly. And obviously now Josh Hart um, mm-hmm. quickly, I think is a little bit better of a shooter and runs the offense a little bit more, but um, those high energy guys that lead to winning basketball that um, it's interesting to, to see when they, I mean, listen, he's one of the guys I'm paying attention to, especially if Zion, well, since Zion's not going to play uh, in this matchup that could tilt a game either way. Um, so before I let you go, because this is a crossover, um, it's not necessarily I want to give you the floor with questions about the Knicks, but in your wildest dreams, when Julius Randle left New Orleans four years ago, did you foresee two-time All-Star one time all NBA. I mean, we'll see how the voting goes this year. A mo- like a most improved player award. How do you predict that? But more specifically, eight three point attempts per game. And like we just we did a, a draft recently, a points, rebounds, assists draft to, to accumulate who will get the most for the rest of the season. You know who's third in the NBA in total points, rebounds, and assists right now? Julius Randle behind <laughs> Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic. He has more than Jokic this season now that that probably changed last night after Jokic went for another triple double um but i just how have you for how have you received watching the the, the i don't say renaissance because we've had our ups and our up and our downs with julius over the last couple of years but <laughs> watching him become this player yeah so that was interesting it was like i feel like this has been such a roller coaster with julius randall because i feel like last year there were some nick fans ready to just Ham sandwich. You know, ship his ass out to whatever team would take his contract. So. Yep, ham sandwich. Ready to trade him for whatever. <laughs> you name it. And boy, were we wrong because this version of the player existed. And that's a credit to him for yeah. picking up a, the correct shot uh, shot diet, uh, switching his game up to where he's much more aggressive, not just going downhill, but getting to the, the shooting the three. I yep. just The guy attempts more three-pointers a game than a, a lot of players that – like. More than Jason Tatum per game, I'm pretty sure. At least for 36. Well, that also helps the Nick. He only he only plays 36 minutes, but I digress. Continue. No, so it's I I'm curious. So what what is how do teams I I, I haven't I mean from the Knicks games I've watched this year, like I, I are teams what do they do they actually care when he spots up? Like, does he create spacing? Because the, the results are not terribly good right like he's had one really good three-point shooting year in his career and the rest have been pretty average and so I guess this is kind of the Miles Turner debate too we talk about we've talked about him so many times because everyone's like oh Miles Turner would be great for the Pelicans because you know he's a he's a good shot blocking rim protector and he can space floor I'm like 
no, he can't space the floor. Like this year is different. This year he actually has been actually pretty damn good from three point range. But before this year, I mean, he's taking shots, but he's like, he's making them at like a average clip at best. And so like, I'm, I'm not going to care about Miles Turner spotting up if I've got Zion coming at me. Right. So like the question is, are these guys really floor spacers? And so that's the interesting thing with, with Randall is he's just shooting at so many that I guess defense is just say, yeah, okay. I guess I got to pay attention to this guy. And so, I mean, do you find that, do you find that consistently defenses are respecting his, his uh, three point shot or is it just kind of certain defenses will let him let him chalk and other defenses will, will care. So here's what you're going to see tomorrow night. He, I think, leads the NBA in three-point attempts in the first quarter. He sees okay. if he's got it going very early on. And, like, he's got a couple of five three-point first quarters this season. And then that leads to, all right, I guess we're honoring Julius Randle. And then you know he's going <laughs> off that night because he's either the gravity of him getting people to honor the three-point shot lets him get downhill a lot easier into the rim. Or they just keep letting him shoot. There's an eight three pointer <laughs> game that he has against the, uh, the Timberwolves earlier this year where they were just like, keep letting him shoot. And they just never made the adjustment. Um, so I would, I would say he's not necessarily, like you said, he's not a, um, a, a floor spacer at this point, but he's good enough where you have to honor it, that he spaces the floor enough. The Knicks are not a team mm -hmm. that, although lately they actually have been a team that relies heavily on the three-point shot, but they're more of a team that's looking to get to the paint as quickly as possible and either take the first floater available or take advantage of offensive rebounding, or they're looking to kick out to whoever is in the corner, whether it be Quentin Grimes or R.J. Barrett or Jalen Brunson or uh, Julius mm -hmm. Randle, whoever it might be. He's enough of a spacer that they have to honor it. The player I was thinking of was Luca. He's taking more threes a game than Luca on the exact same efficiency this season. So that's where the commitment to being like, listen, we know you're not going to shoot 41% from three again. Yeah. Yeah. We'll settle for 34, but you're taking eight attempts. So the volume is there at least. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's the 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 style that that makes me nervous uh, on the Pelican side is that rim or that attacking the rim mentality because the Pelicans haven't been great at stop. You know, Jonas has taken a step back this year. Mm. Um, I, I feel like the Pelicans are still underutilizing him uh, candidly, but he has been, he hasn't been quite the same guy he was last season. Um, he's, I mean, he's never been a great rim protector, but this year he's been particularly terrible. Um, his defense overall, he's, he hasn't been, he's been a, decent an average to above average team defender but he's never been a good rim protector and so mm. that's somewhere the Knicks can have some success I'm curious to see what they do what the Pelicans do against Julius Randle if, if that's the Herb Jones assignment because um Herb also has taken a step back offensively I think part of that is because of poor offensive design um he's just been camping out in the corner and he's a 30 percent three-point shooter and no one's going to care and so he's got they got to get him moving a little bit more um but I think on the defensive side, he's he's still the same guy. He's going to cause problems, and so I, I I think that it could be an interesting matchup for Herb on Randall. And I can already see the uh, you know the smoke coming out of people's heads if if, if they call a, a, a silly foul or two on him that maybe is kind of borderline and gets him in trouble. Um, I am curious if Dyson Daniels plays. That's probably you know a name that isn't going to really jump off the page for Knicks fans. But he was the first round pick. The, the Pelicans took him with the Lakers pick they had last year. He's been he's been good for them. I mean, he's not he's yeah. not tying up box score stats, but uh, he's had an ankle injury. He's been out for a month. He's questionable for the next game. Um, he's been another really strong defender um, who is more of a create uh, uh, more of a uh, you know a traditional point guard than Herb Jones is more of a wing. Um, and so I'd like you know the, the ability the Pelicans have to throw good wing defenders at teams. And so I think that's one thing they do have going for them. They have Najee Marshall. They have Herb. They have hopefully Dyson Daniels. All to throw at good perimeter players on opposing teams. Again, I'm more concerned with the Pelicans' offense because it just has been a slog over the last few weeks. You know, Pelicans have not been able to score consistently. It's been a lot of isolation ball with CJ or BI. And again, yeah. I don't think that's their fault. I think that again, this is kind of comes down to more oversimplistic offensive, you know, uh, structure. Uh, and so they're not using Jonas the same way they used him last season. Um, you know, to, and, and making him more of a, a guy who can they can dump the ball into and kind of create some inside outlooks. Um, and so, a lot of concerns I have right now. The Knicks are catching the Pelicans, I think, at a, at a decent time, um, just because you know they they really haven't been playing their their best basketball. Like, and, and seeing, I, I was tweeting about these stats this morning, are that 
the the CJ Ingram Herb Jones Jonas Valanciunas combo last year without Zion. So like after the CJ trade, they were elite. Like that 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 lineup was blitzing teams. Um, mm. A lot of bad teams, but still like they were they were playing very well. And even when they put Trey in that lineup and took out Jackson Hayes and against the Phoenix Suns in the playoffs, they had pretty good results. This year has been the total opposite. They've been mm. terrible. And there's not really an easy way to exp- – the, the difference is so staggering that there's no easy way to – you can't point to one thing and say this is why this is happening. And so, um, you know, you just hope that they can turn it around because um, if they don't, <laughs> the plan is going to be out of reach. Like they, they, all, all it takes is the Lakers – Lakers made some great moves at the deadline. It take All it takes is them – putting you know, continuing to ride that momentum um and having ad and, and lebron stay healthy some some team's gonna fall out is it the thunder could be um is it the warriors if steph can't get healthy sure but also could be the pelicans and so not to say the lakers are a lock for the plan they've still got work to do but um well, I, new orleans needs to be worried about this i will say I, look I, I hear you on the concerns and um the the things that need to be cleaned up uh watching what happened last night in portland I think I know one of the teams that is going to commit to falling out of said playoff race, but eight days off for Dame and, uh, and Jeremy Grant. And all of a sudden they're out for the first game with rest. Well, there was travel concerns there, right? Like they, they, it took they, they were... sat on the tarmac in first class. I don't want to hear it. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to hear it. You are a professional. Um, I don't, I don't, mm, especially since I'm from Knicks land with Thibodeau and how like we're playing our guys up 30 against the Pistons where I'm just, I'm so trained to be like every possession matters. And Dame is taking like an extra day of vacation. I'm just, I'm, I'm not there. I'm sorry. I'm just not. So. Although the science sure. might actually be in their favor. Believe me, I get it. I just also don't think it has anything to do with science. It's more to do with yeah. ping pong balls. That's just my <laughs> philosophy toward it, sure at enough. least. Well, um, I think you took the other tell, team they could potentially move move that direction too. Yeah. As you can tell, just generally speaking, I think things are not the vibes are, are the vibes were immaculate or in November in December for Pelicans World. The, the, the vibes are not good right now. Um and yeah. so it's it's obviously the heavily correlated to Zion's injury, but but still, I mean, I think there's still even when you pull it out of the equation, I, there's some general frustration about how the team is, is functioning um, with, despite having the exact same team they had to close out last season. So let me follow up on that. The the frustration with the dysfunction, how much of that, I guess, do you, and I guess more specifically the fan base, is they putting that on Willie Green? It's a fair question. Um, and I, I, I will, I, I will say that it's unfair to put, all of this on, I, I don't like when it's on Willie Green. I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to put it on the coaching staff. I think Willie Green, I, I still can't say enough good things about the way he gets his players to rally behind him. Like, I mean, the, the, the run they made last year after the CJ trade, like he's a great motivator of people. The players love him. And that's so important as, as, a, as someone who watched Stan Van Gundy coach this team right before. <laughs> the, the, the difference is staggering. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, it does seem like the coaching staff has fallen short here on ways to, to, to make this offense functional. Like if you talk, I mean, a team with CJ McCollum, and Brandon Ingram and, and Jonas Valanciunas with a, 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 one of the best shooters in the league, Trey Murphy flanking, like there's no reason that the, that offense should be bottom of the league. Like there's just, it just doesn't make any sense. And so I don't fault people for wanting to blame the coaching staff, at least to a degree. And so I think that's fair. I just, I, 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 I caution at the Willie green. I don't think, I think it's the whole coaching staff is responsible for the game plan. Uh, but yeah, it's fair. No, I, I just more of a curiosity. You, yeah. I don't know if you'd be surprised by it because I think this is just the nature of every fan base and their relationship they have to the coach of their basketball team. But I, there, there's been a civil war amongst Knicks fans about how good the Knicks are because of Tibbs, how much they're being held back because of Tibbs, how much credit you give him for the the sixth best offensive rating or whether they'd be even better if they had an mm-hmm. offense that relied less on isolation and more on ball movement and pick and roll. Um, I fall somewhere in the middle where it's like I went through Derek Fisher and Jeff Hornacek and David Fisdale and a lot of the, the, the horrors of the mid 2000s and 2010s that I'm kind of just that's right enjoying. when I got off the uh, that's right when I got the, the uh, Hornets in New Orleans, too. So I, I think I was able to jump ship at the right time. You're, you're good call, first of all. And like the Titanic kept sinking, Mason, I'll tell you. And now it's finally like get, taking a step back toward the surface. So um, I look, I, I think that's just the nature when it comes to, to fan bases and, and how they they 
they're the again the relationship they have to their basketball team is when things aren't either either when they go wrong or aren't what they want them to be you point to the person in charge and yep. you know i i think the reasonable from my perspective the reasonable take with the pelicans is like they lost their best player and when they had him he was they were, they were outstanding. So um, I'm curious to see, again, I'm, I'm very curious to see what the Pelicans look like when he gets back. And, you know, if there is kind of another playoff run that, uh, that they can make um, last thing before I let you go, um, mm-hmm. I kind of want to, I do want to give you the floor as far as um, how the, how you feel the Knicks are doing. I like to get the perspective from other people and look, I let's not dance around it. Um, you you have had some takes in the past on the good old twitter.com about the New York Knicks and uh, the market that they play in. Um, But just from your perspective, how have the Knicks done this season and the direction that the franchise is headed? Yeah. I mean, those, those takes were all, I I think all about the Zion, all, all the Zion stuff. And like, obviously as a, you know, for New Orleans, it got a little, little nauseating and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really driven by, the Knicks or Knicks fans specifically, but it was just kind of like that. The, uh, yeah, I think there is a market bias that plays into it. But I think as far as the uh, as far as the, the the team and the trajectory, I mean, I think I it's I I, I feel like um, I've been pleasantly surprised with how good Brunson's been. I I don't think um, I was I, I I don't think I you know, ever thought that was a bad contract, but I wasn't. I was like, you know, it's a you know, it's a good you know, the, the deal makes sense, but I, I didn't think he'd be as good as he's been. Uh, and so Brunson being that good is awesome. I love it because it's, I, I'm personally like very happy about it because of what it means for the Mavericks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as, a, as a divisional opponent with, with you know, seeing what they had to do to go. Like they basically all, after all said and done, they replaced Brunson with a more talented, but more volatile version of Brunson. Like, I, I think it, that's fair to say. And like, I, I caught some heat for with Kyrie stands on Twitter for saying something like that about how, oh. how good, you know, how good uh, Kyrie is at his best. I'm like, sure. But I, can you trust him? And like, I feel like the, 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 the Mavericks have to expand so many assets to just replace this, the mess up they made by not keeping, keeping Brunson in the first place. And so, um, you know, cool to see that. I'm a, I'll always be a Josh Hart fan, so I'm I'm rooting for him in New York, and he's going to be great for you guys, as he's already been. And so, um, so look, I mean, I think the um, yeah, I think the trajectory has been has been solid. I think the question for the Knicks in the future is like, you've got to find that guy to put it all together because I don't think I, I would assume you'd agree that Julius Randle is not the number one on the title team. So it's funny you ask that because it's not that you're right. Of course, I don't assume that. It's that. And look, maybe this just isn't possible in today's NBA. That's kind of like you need a, not just a star, but a collection of stars. But like he's been like Josh Hart has been getting comparisons. And this is like a very inside baseball reference to Dave DeBusher, a guy the Knicks traded for in the late 60s. And he just made like he was a sixth or seventh guy that made a championship team click all of a sudden. They end up beating the Lakers and winning two titles with DeBusher. Anyway, like there's other comparisons being made to like maybe Josh Hart is Rashid Wallace going to the 04 Pistons. I'm not there with Josh Hart. I'm wondering if the move is less about like you need to trade Randall for Embiid or star X. And it's like, could you trade like RJ in the right package for Ananobi? And then it's more of a style fit. I'm not even sure I want to trade RJ Barrett. Like there's still an untapped, ceiling i personally want to find out about but i guess it's way more about because this team is young and all of these like they don't have a max contract on their roster and they have all of these these assets and picks so clearly the other guy is coming but like to fully answer your question i don't think randall or brunson is the best player on a championship team but Mm -hmm. like do they need to go get the first guy like they thought they needed to with mitchell or do they need to get like another second guy to to fully complement that and then just like the, the the style ends up working because they have so many people similar to memphis although they have Ja committing to the same to this one style of play that could lead to multiple playoff rounds being one you know yeah because there because you can make some comparisons across the you know with both teams uh with you know you can you can make the brunson and cj mccollum comparison you can make the brandon ingram and julius randall comparison and so um you know i i, I think 
you're, you know, they're not, they're not the same player, but I think they're, they're in they're Both guys are in the same tier a, a, as the other or similar mm-hmm. enough. And so the question comes down to, um, you know, a supporting cast and B who's, who's, who's the dude. And so I, I, I do, I think that um, that is an interesting consideration. Um, and so, you know, can you, if, if you've got, if, if, if you've got Julius Randall and, and Jalen Brunson, who are both in the prime of their careers, so it's not like you've got to worry about like a huge fall off in the next couple of years. Um, another reason I was just like, you know, why would you let the 26 year old Brunson go Mavericks and go mm-hmm. trade for the 30 plus year old Kyrie Irving? But, um, but yeah, so I mean, I think I think that's the the question of you know when it comes like when you're in a playoff series and and the, the defense starts to to clamp down because that's where we saw that the Pelicans very quickly were outclassed by the by the Phoenix Suns last year with with BI and with with uh with CJ because they just didn't have the the firepower to to, to keep up but um you know once once Booker came back later in that series but um I, I think that's always a question you've got you've got to look at this through the playoff series lens like can you win three or four playoff series with this group and I think um, you know, I, I think the Knicks are in a good place uh, to continue to build. And the question is, how do they build and who do they, you know, who's the target? Um, and so, um, so yeah, I mean, like I, I totally understood the, the, the drive for Mitchell. And, and I think I was, I was actually of the opinion that the Knicks should, you know, jettison whatever it took to go get him. Cause he is, he is that kind of superstar that brings, you know, um, reputability to your franchise uh, in, in, in an additional way. But that was when Randall was still like that was last season's Randall, right? Yeah. And so now you've got you know the revitalized Randall from two years ago who's making good decisions, and you've got Brunson who, you know, is he as good as Donovan Mitchell? No, but he's he's not that far off this year with how well he's been playing. And so, um, so you've got you've got some good pieces there. Um, and the, and the question now is, you know, what what what's what's the next step? And I'm I'm very curious because because it's it takes two to tango. You've got to have the right you've got to either have the right trade partner or you've got to have the right free agent to go get. And to, and so that's the hard part. Right. But it's not like the Knicks have are no, no assets to move to go get that guy. Right. If anything, they have an abundant abundance right. of assets to, yep. and that I think is the biggest difference between this summer and last summer. Cause last summer they, like you, like you said, they, they could have gone all in on Donovan Mitchell and made that trade. But I just, I still would have so many questions about, like I hadn't seen Brunson play yet. I, I have no question. I have so many questions about Julius Randle. Look, as much as I've been happy and I guess uh, uh, satisfied with the job that Tibbs has done last year, last year he was horrific as a as as a minutes distributor, um, at figuring out who it needs to play when, and like just lean so heavenly on the Fourniers and the Taj Gibsons and the Alec Burks of the world when you had younger pieces that could have contributed toward winning and we're seeing them do that this year, you know? So I think now that their assets have taken a step up now, the if a Donovan Mitchell was available, you'd make a ton more sense. But I think yeah. the fear among the fan bases at the moment is that the guy will be Zach Levine, Carl Anthony towns, guys that have yet to prove either that they can stay on the court or that when they're on the court, they can really lead to multiple playoff rounds of winning, which is why I think See, you said something. Man, like, ta- talented Randall front court would be super interesting. I, I mean, I would. I think you think so. I think that's a. I mean, I, I'm not sure how the defense holds up. <laughs> that's, but, that's, the, that's the thing. Randall's defense. Ha- I got to be honest. He's actually been a decent. I say decent. So Knicks fans, don't yell at me when I'm saying he's not good. Decent <laughs> defender this year. He's been a body this year. He hasn't yeah. been like he has his plays that he takes off, but. I've actually been like, okay, Julius is playing defense on this possession. I noticed it. He's he's been moving his feet uh, more so than he has in the past. What I'm I'm gonna give most of their credit for with with how they've not nec- somewhat hidden Randall is that Mitchell Robinson is a beast with the rim protection. So as a result, Julius just doesn't have to worry about that portion of the court and he can focus closer to the perimeter as a result. Um, that goes away with Carl Anthony Towns, who, as we have seen, played under Tibbs and was not as successful. Now, I'm not but, saying that because also, of Tibbs, you can't trade for Carl Anthony Towns because you get rid of the coach if it doesn't yeah. work, you know? But see, I, I think, uh, so, and that's the thing, like, when you get into a playoff series, like, is is a Randall Ro- is a Randall Robinson front court lineup? Is that like is the is it good enough? And I I, I think teams would like I wouldn't be hesitant to play a zone defense against like or, or just oh they will like don't that. worry like, they will 
We've been like seeing that, a lot so of zone the, against the Knicks lately, and then Tibbs just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. But yeah, wait, yeah, and Mitch, Mitch, Rob, Mitch Robinson's a, a New Orleans guy, so like, our, mm-hmm. you know, he's he. I, I'm a I'm a big fan. I, I just wonder like if 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 Randall's shooting is off, and Mitch Robinson obviously doesn't shoot, and like, what do you what do you do? Um, and so so that's I mean that's the that's the give and take is like that's and that's the that's the challenge the Pelicans have with with building around Zion too is that who is the the other front court partner that really makes sense for him? Uh, and and there's just like he, he gives you a lot of luxuries and 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 uh you can concede in certain areas because of how good he is but the 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 challenge is it, it is hard it's, it's hard to find the guy who fits next to him um yeah. in the long term i think you said something smart in that it's one thing all right i'll take it okay you said something recently smart um <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll see if i can go back in post-production and find multiple ones but um no just that i i'm looking at it from the perspective of a regular season lens and i think the next step for knicks fans is to start looking at things through a playoff lens because the playoffs aren't so um delusional to to think of anymore um now look they i'd like to see them make the playoffs two times in a row for the first time since carmelo anthony was here but um i think that's the next well listen that's the next well so there there you get it um i think that's the next evolution of how uh, this fan base is starting to look at this that Mm -hmm. um if they they had a really disappointing showing against the hawks two years ago even though they had home court in that series then last year happened and this year if you push the Cavs, the Bucks, whomever to six games and like that is the, the the test that you get. And then next year you're looking to make an even bigger step. You have the six game series as your lens and not what works in the regular season. Um, and then maybe that's when they decide to to make the move. Although I think I think that I, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident in letting you know now the Knicks will make a move this summer for a guy, whether it's Cat, whether it's Levine, whether it's Ananobi, whomever it is. And I can I'm pretty sure I know who will be at the center of it too. And he's Zion's old college buddy, uh, Mister Mister RJ Barrett. So we'll we'll see what what happens in that stretch. Um, yeah, you've been great with your time. I appreciate it. I told you 35, and we're coming up on 45 already. I really appreciate okay. it, Mason. Yeah. Um, also, congratulations. You you threw it in there. You're you're seven week old. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> Thank on, you. And welcome to fatherhood. Uh, before you get out of here, please tell everybody they can find in the know and uh, all the great stuff that you do. Yeah, um, so part of uh, Boot Crew Media, uh, so it's a local uh, media network uh, in New Orleans covering all things New Orleans sports, um, college, uh, pros, you name it. Um, my my co-host uh, and I, uh, Shemit Dua, we host uh, the In the, In the Know podcast, uh, which is just our our, our Pelicans uh, Pelicans pod, but lots of other stuff, uh, great stuff on that um, on on that site. So um, make sure to, to come come check us out if you're interested in in, in what Zion and the Pelicans are up to. Awesome. Mason, as always, man, good to see you. And Oh, last yep. question before I let you go. Who's the What's Saints up? quarterback going to be next year? <laughs> ah, man, I, I don't know. I'm I have my, my, my Saints fan has waned over the last decade. Ah, uh, it's okay. like since 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 the Super Bowl win was that was my senior year of college. So like that was like that. And then Mardi Gras was all happening at the same time. It was like the, a month of my life. I'll <laughs> never remember. I think is probably the best way to put it. Okay. Um, but just like it's gone downhill since since then. Um, I'll I'll follow when they're good. But I don't know. People seem to think that this, that David Carr guy might might be the guy. Derek but... Carr, yeah, Derek Carr. No, that's right. David Carr was the Texans guy who yes, was terrible. Yes. I see. All right, I remember that at least. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll see. The, the, I mean, the, the Saints. The one thing about them is they continue to kick the can down the road with the cap stuff, and uh, eventually the you know it's gonna. Uh, the bill's going to come due, and then hopefully, hopefully at that point, the Pelicans and Zion are the, are contenders, so we can you know forget about the Saints for a little bit. I'll say this: the the I'm a Jets fan, so it's weird how this whole Aaron Rodgers going into I don't know how much you've paid attention to this, but he went on an isolation retreat where like no electricity, no light, like it was I'm going into darkness, and the way it was covered was like it was the Vatican and we're waiting to see smoke because he said when he comes out, he'll decide what team he wants to play for next year, whether it's the Packers or the Jets or whomever. And I'm just like, look, I'd love to have Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback on my football team next year as a as a Jets fan who had to watch Zach Wilson and three weeks of somewhat healthy Mike White. Um, I also like at a certain point, he is 40 years old and he is, you know, kind of a lunatic. A little bit, but you know, I, I, I've rooted for worse 
in the past. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, it's it's not a Brooklyn situation. But um, yeah, I it, it's a, I was curious if you had any uh, if, how Saints fans were feeling because I know he's been not linked to the Saints, but I know Derek Carr has, and the Jets just spent like two hours with Derek Carr at like a nice restaurant yeah. in Jersey. We, so we had we we dealt with a quarterback who was slinging uh, like Advocare in that pyramid scheme, uh, Drew Brees. Yes. So I don't think we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need alternative alternative medicine, Aaron Rodgers, uh, alternative COVID solutions to, yes. to, to help, uh, you know, fin- finish that off. So no, no thanks. There you go. Mason, thank you, my man. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. Take care. And-